Hi there, this is Tony from Pianotone.ca, and this is my review on the brand new and super cool Hammond M Solo organ. I bought this organ in early 2024 to be a central piece of my new keyboard rig with my band, which also includes a Studio Logic Numa Compact 2X for all my non-organ needs, like piano and electric piano. And while I've only had it for a couple of months, I've been pretty impressed so far. And just in case you're uh, brand new to Hammond organs and how they work, um, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to a video where uh, Marine Lacoste, who is a pro Hammond organ player and the founder of OnlineRockLessons.com, is my guest and explains how Hammond organs work, or what the drawbars do, etc. So if you're not already familiar with all of that, I'd highly recommend that you uh, watch that video first and then come back to this review. So let's check out the Hammond M Solo. So what's the intended use for the Hammond M Solo? You might be looking at this tiny keyboard, which only has 49 keys, only has four organ voices, a string and a synth section, has no display, just a purely button-driven user interface. And you might be wondering, what exactly is this for, and is it really worth 1300 US dollars? Well, to be honest, depending on your needs and interests, the M Solo could be anything from not even worth considering to exactly what you need and worth every penny. So what is that need that the M Solo is intended to fill? If you're a keyboard player who already has a fully or semi-weighted digital piano or keyboard uh, that you use for piano, electric piano, other sounds, but the organ sounds, functionality, and the key action for organ playing on your main keyboard are just okay, and you would really like to have a better sounding organ with proper organ functionality like draw bars, chorus, vibrato, overdrive, percussion, and a key action that's more suited to playing organ, and a really good sounding Leslie Rotary speaker simulation, that's where the M Solo comes in. The M Solo is meant to be a high quality but super portable Hammond organ that given its small size and weight of only about eight pounds, that can easily be added to a keyboard player's existing rig to significantly improve their organ sounds. So why not just get a full size Hammond like the Hammond XK4? The XK4 is the newest full size offering from Hammond with the latest and greatest sound engine, which is the modeled Tone Wheel 2 sound engine and the latest uh, Leslie speaker simulation. There's also the SK Pro, which has the prior sound engine, modeled Tone Wheel 1, but it also has other sounds, piano, electric piano, synth, etc. Well, I would love to have an XK4 or an SK Pro, and truth be told, I do see one of those in my future. But the first issue is price. Hammond organs are definitely on the expensive side. The XK4 retails for about the same price as a Nord Electro 6D at around 2500 US dollars. Well, guess what? The Hammond M Solo uses the same sound engine as the Hammond XK4, but it sells for only about half the price. And it still meets all the basic uh, organ needs with proper draw bars, chorus, vibrato, overdrive, percussion, and an awesome Leslie. Now, depending how significant your organ needs are, you might still be better off with a full-size 61 key version like the XK4 or the SK Pro. But a lot of players, especially people that are playing uh, piano, electric piano, and organ in a band can get by quite nicely by just adding a 49 key uh, organ for co organ comping parts and organ solos. And having that available as a second keyboard allows you to quickly and easily bounce back and forth between organ and piano parts in a song, as opposed to trying to do that on a single keyboard with splits or changing patches, etc. So that's what the M Solo is intended for. Let's dive into the review. I'm gonna go over the user interface and organ sounds first, and then I'll talk about the uh, key action and the connectivity. As I mentioned earlier, the M Solo also has dedicated string and synthesizer sections. These are definitely way out of my area of expertise and interest, to be honest, but I will go over them uh, as well, but pretty quickly. So with all that out of the way, let's check out the Hammond M Solo. Okay, so the user interface is basically a what you see is what you get. In the top left, we've got our master volume. That's pretty self-explanatory. Then below that, we've got uh, transpose and octave shift buttons. You can octave shift up or down one octave. So if I press the up button, it's gonna go up an octave. If I press it again, nothing's gonna happen. If I press it down, it resets it. And then down, again, goes uh, one octave down. And it is cool, you can see how the uh, uh, buttons will light up to indicate if I've octave shifted up or down. Now for transposing, you uh, use the same buttons except you hold the transpose button down. Now, as I do this, keep an eye on uh, these lights here. I'm gonna talk about what this is actually for in a second, but if I hold down transpose, you can see they're all dark. Now if I uh, hold down transpose, and uh, I'm gonna press the up button, so that's, that's a C, let's go up uh, one half step. So you can see it transposed, and when I uh, 
And because I transposed, you can see this is lit up now. So if I want to see how I'm transposed, I press that and hold it, and then you can see I've got one light lit up. If I transpose a, uh, another half step, you can see a second light lights up. And so on, so I can keep on transposing up that many steps. And this light is uh, lit up, indicating that I'm transposed. Then to reset that, I'm going to go back down again, and I can also go down steps as well. And then once I reset it, the transpose button is no longer lit up, which just tells me at a glance that I'm not transposed. So that's pretty cool. Then below that, we've got uh, buttons for uh, controlling the Leslie speaker. We've got uh, the ability to speed it up and slow it down, stop it, or uh, bypass it. So when it's the uh, stop is lit up, that means that when I'm not on fast, I'm not on slow, I'm stopped. If that's off, then now the Leslie is on, but it's on slow. Then if I want, I can bypass it altogether. Now you're also going to see some uh, writing above the button in a different color, that it's uh, an octave up or down. That's basically going to turn these two buttons into uh, pitch bends. Uh, if you're using uh, the non-organ voices, so the uh, string ensemble or the synth. So for example, if I go to the uh, string ensemble, and then I'm uh, going to hold the note down and then uh, press this, uh, this is going to act as a uh, pitch bend up. And if I hold down this where it says octave, and then press the pitch bend up, it's going to go up an, all, uh, an entire octave gradually. So cool if you're into that kind of thing. And that also works uh, on the uh, synthesizer section as well. Then beside that, we've got our uh, chorus and uh, vibrato controls for the organ voices. So right now, uh, the vibrato and chorus are turned off. And if I want to, to uh, activate it, then I would turn it on. So you'll hear a sound difference between off. And now it's on, and that's uh, chorus three. Then I can switch to the different modes. Vibrato one, chorus one. Etc. You do this on a traditional Hammond organ with a knob, but uh, same thing. And then I can just turn it off. Now above that, we've got the system record button. That's basically if you've got a custom setup that you want to record into one of these three uh, registration patches, then uh, you can hit uh, uh, system record and or hold system record and choose which patch uh, you want. Now the type button is for choosing your voice. So we've got uh, Hammond B3. We have a, a Vox organ, Farfisa, Acetone, and then we're into the string uh, ensemble and the uh, synthesizer sections. Then we've got the uh, draw bars, and the draw bars are, uh, of course, central to the uh, Hammond organ, and also uh, they do have some functionality with the other organs as well. And it's nicely laid out on the uh, panel where you can actually see a line uh, going from, uh, for example, B3 to see what the uh, B3 draw bars are and then the Vox as well. And uh, note on the Vox that you have to have, I don't really know much about Vox organs, but you do have to have either uh, one of these two uh, kind of waveform things set. Right now I'm not hearing anything. If I pull down either of those, then you'll start to hear stuff with the Vox. And then uh, same thing with the Farfisa. It, uh, the, you follow that line, it tells you what the drawbars are doing for that. Same for the acetone. And then for the string ensemble and the synth, once again, same thing. The string ensemble, uh, it's going to be different uh, kind of instruments and stuff. And then you go over to the right, and it's actually going to change the attack and the release for the string ensemble. So, for example, if I slide the uh, release down, as opposed to a quick release, and if I slide the attack down, it's a slow attack versus a fast attack, etc. And then the synth uh, also has uh, settings for what it does up there. Then to the right of the draw bars, uh, we've got a chorus and overdrive. Now, uh, these are labeled in different colors that match uh, the different uh, voice types. So the chorus is in uh, kind of a gold color. That means it's only going to function on the uh, synth or the uh, string ensemble sections. And the overdrive is going to be an overdrive for the organs. 
So if I turn the overdrive on, I'm back on my B3 again. You can hear you're getting a little bit of distortion there. I can turn that down. Or I can crank it up. And then for, let's go to the string ensemble again. You can see now I'm cranking a chorus. We're turning a chorus down. Then beside that, we've got a uh, knob that's marked uh, delay slash reverb. And this one's actually a little kind of unique in how it works. There's a notch in the center where it catches. And to the right, it's going to increase reverb. And to the left, it's going to increase delay. So if I turn that on, we're just going to go back to the organ here. Crank the reverb. And if I go to the other side, it'll be cranking the delay. So I guess with the organ, it's one or the other. You can either have delay on or reverb, etc. Then below those, we've got the uh, percussion controls. Those are only for the uh, B3 organ only. So on will enable percussion. Now, if you're not familiar with what percussion is, it adds an initial uh, kind of a uh, uh, noise to uh, the key when it's pressed. For example, if I don't have any draw bars out and I turn the percussion off, you're not gonna have any sound on a B3. But if I turn percussion on, you get this initial noise. And uh, that's uh, a very uh, kind of a signature thing with uh, B3, uh, Hammond B3 organs. So if I turn it on to soft, it's not quite as harsh. And if I turn it on to fast, that means it's going to decay quickly. And then I turn it on to a third. Right now you're hearing a harmonic. If I turn it on to a third, you're going to hear a different harmonic. So you can include uh, those in your settings. And then once you have, actually have your draw bars out, they do, uh, they do make a difference in, uh, in what, uh, what the keys are going to sound like. Then to the right, we've just got our registration patches. Uh, there's, uh, the, the keyboard comes with three. This one's an organ patch. So you can see as soon as I pressed that, uh, a bunch of things got activated here. And if I don't touch the draw bars, uh, then the draw bars are going to be set to whatever was saved in this patch. So it's like a rock organ. And then there's one that's a string ensemble. And then one that's a synthesizer one. And then if you press manual, now you're in control of uh, your sounds yourself. And then once again, you can use that system record button in conjunction with these patch keys to save your own patches on top of those three. I do wish that there was like just a few more of those, like maybe even 10 would be a huge, uh, huge improvement. So I quite like this user interface. Everything you need is right in front of you and labeled, uh, which is awesome. Okay, so for sounds, as I mentioned previously, the M Solo uses the latest and greatest sound engine from Hammond, which is the modeled Tone Wheel 2 sound engine, also included in the Hammond XK4. So this sound engine is actually more recent than the one in the SK Pro and also more recent than the one in the most expensive Hammond, the XK5. FYI, if you look on YouTube for M Solo versus MK4, you'll find some uh, comparison videos that basically show how those two uh, keyboards sound exactly the same. So in the upcoming demo, I'm going to spend 90% of my time on the Hammond organ sounds and effects, and then I will very quickly go through the other sounds. While the synth engine does seem to have a lot of flexibility, as I mentioned earlier, I know zero about synthesizers, nor do I have much personal interest in them. So I won't spend much time on those, but let's check it out.
So I also wanted to compare the current organ engine sounds from the M Solo and XK4 to those from an older uh, organ engine just to see how much they've evolved. So I managed to get my hands uh, on a Hammond SK1, uh, which I could borrow, which came out uh, back in 2011. This is the predecessor for the SK Pro series, uh, which came out in 2021, but you still see SK1s in use on stages all over the place. It really was, and actually still is, a pretty cool uh, gigging keyboard. Like the SK Pro, it has other sounds in it like pianos and electric pianos. Here's just a quick comparison. Now, to be honest, while I am accumulating more experience with Hammond organ clones, I in no way consider myself an expert. Uh, but in my opinion, the older patches on the SK-1 still sound awesome and are totally usable. In a live situation with a band, I'm not sure I would be able to hear a huge difference, if any at all, between the SK-1's organ sounds and the M solos. But with headphones in a studio situation, the M solo does sound a little bit better to me. Especially the Leslie and the uh, virtual multi-contact keys really do add something noticeable to the sound. But I am super glad that I borrowed this SK-1 because it confirmed something that I was kind of expecting, which is I absolutely love this key action. I can play organ songs far better on the SK-1 than I can on the M solo or on any other keyboard I've ever tried to play organ songs on. With that in mind, let's move on to the key action. Okay, so key action. So I just mentioned that I absolutely love the key action on the Hammond SK-1, which I believe is a Fatar TP-80 keybed, but I could be wrong. So a proper Hammond organ keybed and key action is actually a bit unique and is very different from a piano. Organ keybeds should be semi-weighted, not fully weighted, and not graded, so all keys should have the same weight. 
The shape of the keys is also really important. Organ key beds should be waterfall shaped so they have a smooth front edge on the keys. So they're not supposed to have a lip over the front edge of the key like a piano does. And the front edges should be nice and smooth, even a little bit rounded on the corners as opposed to having sharp corners. And why is this? Because doing organ slides or palm smears, which are the organ equivalent of a piano glissando, are an essential part of playing organ. And I can even tell you from my limited experience that doing these on fully weighted piano uh, shaped keys with sharp edges is not easy, doesn't work very well, and to be honest, can actually hurt a bit. So how does the action on the M solo shape up? Well, the first thing to note, as you can see by looking at them, these are not waterfall keys. They are synth style diving board keys, although they do have rounded corners, which do help a great deal with those palm smears. So if you take a look at this photo from the front, it shows the uh, M solo diving board keys at the top and the uh, SK-1's uh, waterfall keys at the bottom. As far as how the M solo keys feel, they do feel slightly semi-weighted to me. While I can't say for sure uh, without taking the keyboard apart, if they're not semi-weighted and they're just spring action keys that are meant to mimic semi-weighted, if that's the case, then they're the best feeling spring action keys I've ever played. Uh, the action actually feels very similar to the action on my other keyboard, my NUMA Compact 2X, which has a semi-weighted action from a uh, Fatar TP9P keybed. The P stands for piano for the shape of the key. The M solo keys feel just a touch lighter than the Numa's keys, but feel very much the same to play, with the exception of the shape of the keys. Fatar does also make a TP9S keybed, which is a diving board uh, synth-shaped keybed version of the TP9P, so who knows. But regardless of what keybed is in the M solo, how does it feel to play as far as organ actions go? I would have to say that it is surprisingly playable for a non-waterfall keybed. The keys are true full size, they play nice and smooth, the weight feels good, and the palm smears are totally doable. That being said, however, it's still no replacement for a waterfall organ key bed. So I'd have to say I'd happily live with a slightly bigger and heavier version of the M solo with a proper waterfall key bed in it. Having used it a bunch with my band, it's been totally okay playing most organ uh, style songs on it, with one exception. That could just be my... Uh, playing ability coming in here too, but that's playing a percussive style which you often see. Given that it's a slightly lighter feel, it is a little bit challenging, at least for me, to control those left-hand percussion uh, strikes. So for those songs, to be honest, I've started using my NUMA Compact instead as a controller for the M solo. But in comparing the M solo's organ action to other non-waterfall organ-centric keybeds that I've played that would include the Yamaha CK61 and the Roland VR09, the M solo's action is way better than either of those. So not the end of the world. And once again, you do have to keep in mind that this keyboard isn't really intended to be a main keyboard. It's intended to be a high-end organ add-on to your existing rig. So all, all of that considered, the action's pretty good. So before moving on to connectivity, an important feature to mention regarding the keybed on the M Solo is that it is a virtual multi-contact keybed. So what does that mean? Well, on a real Hammond organ, and I'm probably not describing this technically totally correct, but Generally speaking, it's a tone wheel organ. When you pull out the draw bars and tone wheels start to spin at uh, slightly different speeds, the sound that you're gonna hear from each draw bar is gonna start at a slightly different time. This behavior in effect is replicated on the top of the line Hammond XK5 with actual multi-contacts in the key bed. On the other newer models like the SK Pro and the XK4 and now the M Solo, this effect is there, but it's virtual. So listen carefully, I've only got one uh, draw bar pulled out on the M Solo, and I've actually only got one draw bar also pulled out on the uh, SK-1. No effects or anything on either of them. The SK-1 does not have that uh, multi-contact feature. So let's just see how this sounds. I'm just gonna press a note really slowly. Doesn't really sound unusual, and sounds exactly the same as each other. Well, what happens when I start pulling out some more draw bars? You can hear as I press the uh, note slowly that the uh, different uh, draw bar sounds, uh, pitches, are coming in at different times. Now, what happens when I uh, do this on the SK-1? they all just start at the identical time, and that's because it doesn't have that uh, virtual uh, multi-contact feature. So a pretty cool feature, even if it is just virtual. And after having uh, had both of these keyboards in my possession for the last couple of days together and practicing different songs, that type of thing that I'm used to playing, I can tell you that in headphones, you do notice that uh, multi-contact feature on the M Solo.
One thing to note though is that even though this is being done virtually, MIDI doesn't seem to trigger it. When I connect either my uh, NUMA Compact 2X or the Hammond SK-1 as a MIDI controller to the, uh, the M Solo to trigger the sounds on the M Solo from the other keybeds, you don't get that effect. It doesn't trigger the multi-contact feature. Okay, connectivity. In the connectivity department, the M Solo has a ton. Looking at the back panel, we have a USB to host port, so you can connect the M Solo to a device as a MIDI controller. Uh, note that this is MIDI only. Uh, there is no audio interface built into this port, which is a bit unfortunate. But we do have five pin MIDI in and out ports, and that's a very important feature for this keyboard, in my opinion, in particular, the MIDI in port. While the keybed on the M Solo is great for such a light and small keyboard, as I mentioned, a proper waterfall style keybed is still far better for playing organ. So having a MIDI import allows you to connect another keyboard that has 61 or even 88 keys and a better organ key action to trigger the awesome sounds on the M solo. So you basically get the best of both worlds, like this uh, Hammond SK-1 or even my NUMA Compact 2X, which has a semi-weighted keybed that is pretty decent for playing organ. Then we have an expression pedal in, which is vital for organ playing uh, for managing the volume. And then there is a Leslie Fast port, which is basically a port for a switch pedal. Any basic sustain pedal will work for an easy way to switch your Leslie speed back and forth from slow to fast without having to use the uh, uh, buttons on the panel. And a nice touch here is that there's a polarity switch uh, built right into the keyboard. So if your pedal doesn't have a polarity switch, you're still good to go. Then there's a 1 8 inch uh, auxiliary in, uh, along with a volume control, which is a nice touch for connecting a device to stream audio into the M Solo. Then we have proper left and right uh, line outs with the uh, left being a summed left and right mono signal if you use it by itself. Then there's a one quarter inch stereo headphone port and the power port. So other than not having a mic input or a built-in audio interface, pretty good set of connectivity here and it's definitely optimized for a gigging keyboard. So what's missing or could be improved? Some might say Bluetooth audio in, uh, but to be honest, this is meant to be a gigging keyboard and not a home keyboard. And Bluetooth audio in for a gigging keyboard is something I would never use uh, if I needed to stream an audio in a live situation anyways. I would always use uh, the 1 8 inch audio in uh, instead. But as awesome as the M Solo is, there are two things that would make this exponentially better in my opinion. The first thing uh, that is just small would be to add a few more registration banks. Even getting up to 10 from three would be a big improvement. But the big one, as decent as the key action is on the M Solo, uh, having such a powerful organ engine without proper waterfall keys is a bit of a shame. I would love to have seen a slightly heavier and slightly bigger M Solo with proper keys. Although maybe Hammond did that on purpose. How many uh, XK4 sales would Hammond lose out on if the M Solo had waterfall keys? Okay, competition. While there is competition out there for the main Hammond organ models like the XK4, SK Pro, and XK5, for example, organs like the Krumar Mojo would be competition for the XK4, and uh, the Nord Electro or Yamaha YC61 are direct competitors for the SK Pro. There really isn't uh, anything that competes directly with the M Solo given its super small size and weight and yet top of the line sound engine. Yamaha does have those uh, Reface YC uh, little organ keyboards, and while those are cool, uh, they're only 32 mini, uh, mini keys, so that's not even approaching the same thing. I think at least for now, Hammond really has a pretty unique product that is sitting all by itself in a new market segment that Hammond basically created with the M Solo. So what's the verdict on the Hammond M Solo? The M Solo is a super cool, super unique product that makes a fabulous add-on to an existing keyboard rig for anyone who wants to up their organ game by adding the M Solo to their existing digital piano or keyboard setup. It's super small and super light, so it's not a ton of extra equipment to have to haul around, and yet it boasts the most recent Hammond organ engine, at least at the time of this review. The same one as the Hammond XK4, which is almost twice the price. So if you need to add some amazing quality organ sounds to your existing setup, I can highly recommend the Hammond M Solo. Just keep in mind that you aren't getting the best organ key action there is, and there are only 49 keys. So would I recommend uh, the Hammond M Solo to someone who plays a ton of organ as their main instrument? Unless you're using a MIDI controller with a key action you're happy with for playing organ, then no, I would not. For that, I would recommend moving up to the XK4 or the SK Pro if you need extra sounds. So that's pretty much it for this review. As always, I've left uh, links in the description below to products I've mentioned in the video, so you can check out current prices in your area, as well as some links to some other relevant uh, reviews of mine and uh, some links to online piano training that worked really well for me that I can highly recommend. 
So thanks again for stopping by. If you like the content, please feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. It does really help me out. And uh, one other thing to note is that uh, one of the uh, online courses that I'm recommending below, onlinerocklessons.com, now includes some mini courses that are specific to the Hammond organ. So make sure you check that out. So once again, happy organ playing, happy organ shopping, and have an awesome day.